Hey everyone, I'm Pacifically Casual Gamer, and today I'd like to talk about what a hard support does in Rainbow Six Siege, because I feel like a lot of people maybe don't have the right idea of what all the roles do. You know, people just think entry fraggers frag, hard supports drone, and that's that. And I'm here to tell you that's not quite the case, and I've been playing, you know, with a five stack uh, since about April is when I really started playing with a five stack and solidifying what a hard support actually does, okay? And what what they kind of bring to the team besides, you know, oh, this guy can't kill today, he's on drone duty. So the first step that you really need to understand as a hard support is how you drone is really important, okay? Uh, you need to know if you're throwing your drone into objective-defined information or hiding it and where you hide it, all right? Because let's be honest, we've all been in a situation where we need a drone and we're attacking the third floor of Cafe Dostoevsky and the drone is on the first floor in the freezer, right? And you're like, oh, God dang it. All right, well, I'll drive around. Hold on, guys, let me drone, you know? So you need to understand where the important places to put drones are and also how to hide them, okay? Because what I see a lot of people do when they start to drone and they don't really have experience droning is they'll be like, all right, I'm gonna drone red stairs. And their drone will be on red stairs, like right in the middle of a doorway. And it's very easy to see and it gets shot, right? That's what happens when you first start droning. You're like, oh, this is stupid. My drone dies all the time. So figure out what kind of angles and where to hide your drones, okay? That's really important. And then once you have your drone set up, take a second to figure out where everyone else's drone is. Just for, you know, a little bit, figuring it out. You know, maybe you can't remember all of them because remembering the location of five drones in like five seconds or so is really, really difficult. So, you know, figure out if there's any important drones, you know, maybe someone set up a drone on, we'll, we'll keep using Cafe. They, you know, there's a drone on the other two staircases. You need to know how they're looking too. That's another important thing is how is your drone positioned, right? A good example of this, I'll use Cafe again, is let's say you put a drone in bar. It's in the middle of the bar, right? Literally on the table. And don't put it here, but let's just use this as an example. You can say I have a drone in bar. Where is it looking, right? You can literally look, there's there's so many different places you could face your drone. You could face it towards cocktail. You could face it towards freezer. You could face it towards the other side of freezer. You could face it towards cigar or face it towards new hatch or heaven. Those are all things you could do. Or another thing you could do is drive it off so that you look down into pillars. Yes, your drone's in bar, but what's it watching? Pillars, right? And then what part of pillars is it watching? Because what a lot of what happens is um I've seen this a couple times where I'll be like, yeah, I got a drone in pillars. And then people think pillars is safe when there's actually a guy out of sight in my drone. So I can say I'm looking at the top of brown stairs with my drone. That's a good good call out because they know okay, top of brown, not pillars, top of brown. You know, or my drone on red stairs, where is it? On ca cafe, there's three different levels and also three different mid-levels, so where is it? You know, is it near the top? Is it near the bottom? You can say I have a drone on red stairs, but if you're attacking the top floor and that drone is literally at the bottom, the only thing you're gonna get out of that is footsteps or a guy roaming from kitchen because he was an idiot trying to spawn peek, running all the way up the stairs. So there's that. The other thing about hard support is if you're playing something like a thermite, or a Thatcher, something that's very important that isn't traditionally an entry fragger, you need to make sure you don't die, right? And that's difficult when you're playing Siege and you put a hard support on a more aggressive player or someone that entry frags a lot. They can't die, right? We've all had plenty of experiences where we're like, okay, we're gonna breach this wall with Thermite and he dies. And then you can't do it anymore. Now that's kind of alleviated with the hard breach tool or some other things, that's one example. Or maybe, you know, you're hard breach and you're you're supposed to be the flank watch and you die, right? Now we don't have a gun on flank watch. We can only sit there with a drone that the support should have put there and the drone's gone, you know? So it's really important as a hard support that you don't die first. You shouldn't die first. If anyone should die first, it's hopefully an entry frag. That That's the people that need to die first. Comms are extremely important, okay? That, like when you're hard support, you need to be relaying as much information as possible. You should be super focused on information. If you're Monty, you need to be talking, you need to be pinging. If you're on a drone, you can ping right now, assuming they don't take it out of the game. Callouts, pinging, 
everything, every little bit of information. You need to ask people where they need droned, right? Let's, we could say that we need the third floor of cafe to be droned, but where? I know a lot of hard support is about droning and information and not dying and you're probably on hard breach because you're gonna be out of the fight, right? You're not hard breach because you suck, you're the hard breacher because you're gonna be out of the fight first, which means you're gonna have a higher chance of living and breaking the wall. It's still very important that you keep gun skill, at least maintain your gun skill, right? There's nothing more frustrating, and I've had we've had many games like this before, where the last guy alive was on a support roll, and you've already lost. It's a one v one or a one v two, and you know you're like, yeah, this guy's got a chance, and he just sucks at shooting people, and you're like, well, we lost, right? That's the other thing about hard support is you are the last line of defense most of the time when you play this game. You are the guy who everyone else has died and you need to clean up, right? That that happens a lot as hard support, right? And you need to be prepared for those situations, right? Now it's a little bit easier because at fragging as a hard support rather than an entry fragger because there's probably, most of the time at least, there's less people on the board, but still, you need to have you know, a lot of fragging capabilities. So even if you're stuck on hard support, let's just say for all of your strategies for your entire team, it's still important that maybe when you're attacking and you're playing a ranked game or an unranked game versus a competitive game, you hop on entry frag every once in a while just so you can hone your gun skills. Or you hop into T hunts and practice with entry fraggers versus thermite, you know? So that's really all I have to say about the basics of being a good hard support, you know? Not dying is really important. That's the big one. Not dying and putting drones in good positions are probably the two biggest things that I can give you. And then you, once you have those basics down, you can start working on all the other things like drone spots and hiding your drone, winning gunfights, you know, all of those things will come in practice. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe for more Siege videos. If you want to support the channel, there's links to uh, Computer Mice that I use in the description below. I'm Smithy Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I'll see you guys in the next one.